Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Photoshop for Video, brought to you by CreativeCow.net. Today, we're going to take a look at the Masks panel, which is my personal favorite addition to Photoshop CS4. It gives you precise control over the masks on a layer. Let's see how it works. Now, I'm using an image here that's going to be really easy to knock out the background. So let's just quickly say select color range, and we'll click and drag through the blue sky. There we go. Looks pretty good. I'll say invert, so just the bird selected. Click OK, and add the layer mask. Now that's great, but if you look closely, we have some problems with the mask. Let's zoom in here to 200%. And the biggest issue probably is the blue fringe around the outside edge. And that's going to be really common when you use color-based masks. That's OK. The mask panel makes it easy to fix. You'll see here that we have the ability within the mask panel to adjust density, which is going to be how see-through a mask is, as well as to feather the edges if you want to soften it out. That's good if you're doing things down and dirty. But what we can really do is click the Mask Edge button here to go after the mask in detail. Now, when you do this, you've got some precise controls you need to think about. First off, drag all of these things back so they're at their default values. And that's a good place to start. It remembers the last values you used. That's why that comes up. Now, we have the ability here to look at this different ways. We could say, show me the mask over black or over white. And this makes it really easy to see that fringe. Over black, I didn't see it as much as I did over white. We can also take a look at just the mask itself, looking at its softness or edge, or view this as quick mask or an actual standard selection. For this particular image, viewing on white is going to make it a lot easier to see when we have a clean selection. There we go. Working top to bottom, you just want to clean the mask up. And if you look down here, click the little triangle and you'll see a description that explains what's happening. The first slider radius is going to go ahead and help some of our soft edges. As we drag that there, notice how it starts to clean up some of the feathered areas a bit, which have a softer transition. We could then pull in the contrast to help remove some of the fuzziness in those edges. So those two sort of counterbalance each other a bit. Smoothing will take some of the harder jagged edges and round them out. And that's particularly evident right up here at the tip of the wing. So let's smooth that out a bit. And notice here in the tips of the feathers as well, that does a nice job. We then have the ability to feather. And in fact, this works whether you're dealing with birds and feathers or just a regular image. Feather is simply Photoshop's way of saying, make a gradual selection or a soft edge, like the bird's feathers here, which have a gradual transition at their tips. Let's feather that out just a little bit. And then we can contract or expand. By contracting this in, we could choke away some of that blue. Playing with the smoothness, I can deal with the little divots here, as well as feathering. And when I'm satisfied there, that's looking pretty good. I can go ahead and click OK. And you'll see that the mask updates. If you want to go back to it, just click Mask Edge, and you can take a look at it over black or as a ruby lith mask. That's looking really good. We'll click OK. So the benefit of that mask panel is it's totally non-destructive. When you combine the mask panel with the layer mask, you can infinitely go in and refine the selections, getting just the transparency you need in that graphic. There's a couple more tricks to the mask panel that I want to show you. One thing to point out is the ability to just click the eyeball icon here, and that will disable or enable the mask quickly with a single click. We also have the ability here to apply the mask. So if you click that button, the mask is going to be permanently applied. Now, I'm not a big fan of that. It's a much better idea to just leave the layer mask applied. Most tools will see this. If you're going to import this into a video editing system, Simply do the following. Call back up that a few episodes back, we learned about alpha channels. So you can call up that alpha channel action and just do a quick click and run the standard alpha channel from transparency action. Click continue. There we go. Choose file 
Save As. And what I recommend is saving this as a TIFF file. When you do this and import it into tools like Final Cut Pro or Avid, it's okay. It brings it in as a flattened file. But when you step back into Photoshop, you've got layers with the layer mask and the mask panel fully functional, letting you touch up those edges as you need to. It's going to be very common practice that you might have to jump back and forth from video editor to Photoshop or compositing tool to Photoshop in order to refine the mask edges to get the most believable composite. My name's Rich Harrington. Hope you enjoyed this new feature of Photoshop CS4. Be sure to subscribe to the show over on iTunes. And if you like the show, we'd really appreciate you posting some feedback. And if you don't like it, let us know what we can do better. Thanks again for joining us.